Okay, good evening and welcome back everyone to our Nordic Market uh, Options webinar, webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang. I'm the Chief Strategist here at Options Plight. And today what we're gonna be doing is a, another live market analysis session with Q&A where we're gonna spend some time reviewing the things that we learned over the past couple of weeks. I hope some of you were able to join us for our Nordnet Options Education Day last week. If any of you attended that session where we had four speakers talk about different topics on options, please type yes into the chat window. I was just curious as to how many of you were able to make it to that education event. If you did not, we will be sending out the recording to everyone here within the next day so that you can watch those recordings and see what you missed if you, if you were not able to attend here. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend a little bit of time going through the live markets. I'm gonna try to answer some questions regarding some of the questions that I've been getting about the recent markets, whether people feel that this is a bear market rally and we're gonna start to sell off, you know, is there a correction coming? I want to review where we currently stand with the Nordic markets and why I think that this is a relatively healthy rally and I don't necessarily think that we're heading into a correction territory. So I want to review charts with you and then put them into the context of the things that we've learned over the past few weeks, which is predominantly around risk management how to manage risk in your portfolio, how to think about from a trading psychology perspective, how to cut your losers and then focus more of your attention on maintaining your winners and how to, how to um, spend your time or to spend your, your efforts on how to turn small winners into big winners. And then more importantly, also how to select expiration dates and strike prices. So we're gonna go over all of those things here today. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Before we do, just a quick disclaimer. What we're going to discuss here today is purely for educational purposes. It is not a recommendation or solicitation to buy or sell any specific securities, okay? So I'm glad that many of you were able to attend our Nordnet event a couple uh, last week. We really found that these types of events are useful in giving you a broader sense for how different market participants and professionals utilize options in your portfolio. I'm actually going to ask everyone to fill out a survey at the end of today's session just to get a sense for you know what you're currently receiving from your brokerage firm what you're receiving from options play how satisfied you are with the different option tools and resources and education that you have at your disposal just so we can continue to improve our service and make sure that we provide the best technology the best education the best uh, reports if you will for you to continue your options trading so thank you so much for attending here today so we're going to go over quite a few things First, I'm gonna start with the Nordic market update because this simply is simply because I want to give everyone an understanding as to how where we are viewing the markets from a strategist perspective. And I'm and I want to review this partially because of the questions that I've been getting regarding whether I think correction is coming. So I want to help uh, help everyone understand, uh, you know, how we're viewing the markets. Then I want to talk a little bit about how we're shifting how we're positioning in this particular market based on volatility, how we're changing our option strategies over the past few weeks. As volatility starts to come down a little, as markets become a little healthier, how do we position ourselves or how do we change our option positions to account for the current market conditions? Then what I'll do is a quick review of the two options uh, two options webinars we just did prior to this event which is trading psychology and how to risk uh, manage risk in your portfolio and selecting optimal expiration dates and strike prices and then what we're going to do is we're going to go through some market analysis we're going to go through some trade ideas and we're going to show you how to apply what we're teaching you here in terms of risk management in terms of selecting expiration dates and strike prices with some real examples of the current market current market and opportunities we see in the markets so that you have a better understanding as to how we apply what we're teaching you into the real markets and then lastly what we'll do is we'll open this up for q a ask uh, you can ask any questions you have regarding the markets i know there were a couple of questions already in regards to the uh, open interest so i'll make sure we answer that question at the end and then, like I said, at the very end, I do have a survey for you guys to fill out. So let's go ahead and get started. So, you know, the question that I've been getting the most over the past couple of weeks is really, are the markets due for a correction? Um, and, and I'm curious as to how many of you feel this way. Um, please type yes into the chat window if you feel that the markets are headed for a, a correction. And please type no into the chat window if you don't think markets are headed for a correction, you think it's gonna continue moving higher. 
Okay, a lot of a lot of no's, but quite a few actually more yeses than no's. Um, but I would say a pretty even split here um, between yeses and no's. Uh, quite a few people think that there's a correction coming up, and quite a few say no. And I want to provide some of the the evidence as far as what we look at as a part as as a strategist to try to help answer this question. So. The reality of where we currently stand is that markets certainly seem to be, uh, certainly have rallied, right? They are many of the markets in terms of the indices are starting to reach what we consider overbought conditions. Uh, but one thing that I want to reiterate for most investors is that markets can remain overbought for quite some time. Markets can even see negative divergence. So those of you that use technical analysis and that you see a market as near resistance and it's overbought, you usually think of those as great conditions to short the markets. Um, but the reality and the statistics and the, and the research that we have shows that that's not the case, especially when markets are this strong. And not just, not just this market, but global markets. And one of the things I want to show you here today is that across the entire Nordic reason, region, markets are strong. And in these types of strong markets, it's usually not a good idea to go outright short these markets unless you have some other indications that markets are going to correct lower. And we're not seeing that right now. And just because things are overbought usually is not a good reason to go out and short. Um, those trades very rarely work out from a statistics and probability perspective. So I want to show you why we believe as strategists that markets are much healthier today than they were a couple of weeks ago and a couple of months ago and why at least at this point our base case is to use opportunities where the markets have a small correction or a dip like we've had over the last three trading sessions and use those opportunities as buying opportunities rather than shorting opportunities so those are the different things that i want to go over with you here today so my name is tony zhang i'm the chief strategist here at options play you, i started my career predominantly in the fx space so for those of you that trade currencies you know that currency trading involves predominantly a lot of charting that's really where i learned my technical analysis and one of the things about being a market strategist is that at this point in my career in 13 years of doing this i have worked with thousands of traders so i have seen just about every single possible chart setup a, a trader can have i've seen different accounts account sizes, I've seen successes, I've seen account blow ups, I've seen just about everything. And the one thing that really um, solidifies what a strong or professional or successful trader, you know, the, the traits that I see in them are really boils down to uh, risk management. This is something that we discussed in our trading psychology uh, webinar where we talked about the difference between an infinite versus finite game and realizing that you know the way that I see most traders ask questions about trading what it leads me to believe is that they still think of trading as a finite game where there are winners and losers and that's why I see a lot of traders focus too much attention on how to turn small losers trying to get them into winners um, you know they, they place an options trade it goes against them they don't have uh, the ability to just let that loser go and they do other things they typically add more risk to that trade to try to get that trade to be a winner and that er ironically is actually what causes them to lose in the long run because they're so focused on not losing that they forget that they're not playing a finite game that they're really playing an infinite game which is what trading is trading there's no such thing as winning or losing in trading you either have an account where you can continue trading or you've blown up your account and you've dropped out because because you can no longer afford to continue trading. And this is such an important lesson to learn is to really know what game are you playing. And trading is an infinite game, just like starting a business, just like running a casino. There's no winning. Your goal is to prevent yourself from dropping out. How do you drop out? You, man, you, you blow up your account. So you should at all costs make sure that you do everything you can to manage your risk so that you don't drop out of the game and don't attach yourself to being right. Don't attach yourself to winning because attaching yourself to winning is many times what we see losers get themselves, oh, traders get themselves into positions that they keep buying something that goes against them, trying to get back to break even. And by the time they make their last trade, they've blown up their entire accounts. Now, that might be a bit of an exaggeration, but I think most traders that have ever traded more than a few trades have found themselves in a scenario where they may have taken on more risk because the trade went against them and they added on to that risk, hoping to get back to break even 
only to find themselves in a bigger hole. And that is what we want to avoid at all costs. So I'm gonna to try to teach that in the context of the things we're gonna go over here today. So let's first start off by talking a little bit about where the markets stand, okay? So I'm gonna start off by talking about the Stockholm S30. So this is the major index here in the Nordics. One of the things I want to show you here is that we've had a pretty spectacular run, right? Originally, we had that initial sell-off. It came back to, to about roughly the 50% mark, around 1,500, 1,570 or so. And it really wavered around this, this level for quite some time, for about a month, where it traded sideways between 1,500 and 1,600 or so. And then finally broke out above that a couple of weeks ago. And the market has really been fairly strong since then. And one of the things that's really important you know, that a lot of investors are currently looking at is they're saying, well, this market has ran so much over the past few weeks, it's got to pull back a little bit. It's due for a bit of a correction. Some people feel that it's due for a small correction. Some people feel it's due for a much larger correction. Depending on the your views here in the markets, you may have different views. But one thing I will point you to is the fact that the daily RSI is currently has a reading of about 62 which is bullish, but by no means overbought. So this is not quite in that overbought condition, which means that this can continue to move higher. And what you generally want to do in these types of market conditions is you'll see that it it's very similar to the market that we had back here where it was a pretty steady climb, RSI was pretty strong, but every single time it declined, instead of shorting it, it was a much better buying opportunity. And that's exactly the type of market we're finding ourselves in right now. So if we zoom in a little, and that's exactly the type of trading opportunity that we might see right now. We've got a bit of a small pullback here. Instead of trying to short this particular market, our indication as a, as a strategist is to use these dips as buying opportunities because the market is relatively strong. And I, not only is the Stockholm market strong, all of the markets, generally speaking, are very strong. And that, I think, is the distinct difference between what we would normally consider a bear market rally versus a bull market rally. So at this point, if we look at the broader market, not just the Stockholm index, but if we look at the Copenhagen index, um, if we look at the Copenhagen 25, the Copenhagen 25 is the strongest out of the Nordic markets. It actually has made it back almost to its, uh, well, it is back to its February high. So it is positive on the year. It is within just a few points. It is less than 50 points away from its all-time high around 1380 or so. So the, the Copenhagen index is by far the strongest index. Also, if you see the RSI reading here is 66, so not quite overbought yet. So still room to grow to the upside. What you want to do again is you want to find opportunities where when the stock, when the market consolidates or gives you a small pullback, use those opportunities as buying opportunities. This is exactly the type of market that we currently see right now. Also, we recently just launched the OMX Oslo 20 index. So for those of you that want to trade Norwegian equities or want to trade Norwegian indices. This is the new index that we just added to this. As you can see from an index perspective, the price action looks very similar to the Stockholm index. The difference here, I think, for the Oslo market is the fact that for the most part of 2019, the Oslo index was trading within a pretty tight range here between, let's just call it roughly a little under 800 to roughly 1880 or so. So for the most part of 2019, this index traded within this range. So you have a lot of buyers that bought within this type of range. And this type of buyer, you know, is basically underwater when the markets fell through during COVID. And over the past few months, it's managed to grind its way back higher. And what you're going to see is that likely some investors that have bought up here is, are likely going to try to probably sell some of their equities. So I anticipate the Oslo 20 index to have some um, range bound motion within this 800, 880 range. And if you notice, it is the only um, index in the Nordics that is currently has a reading of 71, which is a bit more overbought. So this is the one that has, in my opinion, the highest 
probability of a short-term correction or some consolidation here because it has reached overbought. It is in a range where you have a lot of investors who had purchased all throughout 2019 who have just been made whole as a result of this recent rally. So these investors may be looking for opportunities to sell some of their stocks. So out of all of the indices, it's really OMX S020, which is the Oslo index that I think is most overbought. But the, if you look at the Stockholm, if you look at the Stockholm, if you look at the Copenhagen index, they're both very strong. They both have quite a bit of room to grow before they are overbought. So these are all indices that I think you can find opportunities here in this particular market here. Now, again, this is given, this is using the current market data that we have. This is given the current information we have. Now, things can change, right? We live in a world right now that things change fairly rapidly, just like how the deterioration during COVID-19 happened very, very quickly. Things can change, right? This is, you know, we could have perhaps a second wave or new countries that perhaps, you know, like Brazil and, and India that we're kind of reopening, but then all of a sudden may realize that they're seeing a huge new spike in cases and they have to close down. And maybe that f has a chain effect and multiple countries around the world have to do that. If something like that happens, that certainly would change things. And perhaps we do get a correction sooner than later, or perhaps some kind of escalation and geopolitical risk with China, with different countries that are out there. That could be another uh, risk that we currently see. So there certainly are risks that can decouple this rally. But with the current market that we have, if you look at the fact that we're seeing broad market support for these types of rallies, it's not just the Stockholm index or just the Copenhagen index that's rallying and the other markets aren't. All the markets are rallying, that's healthy. And if, especially if you look at sector rotation, we're seeing predominantly a lot of the cyclical sectors that are driving the growth here in this particular rally. But we're also seeing that rotation into some of the value sectors, some of the more industrial, some of the more conglomerate companies also, also accelerating. So we're seeing uh, you know, a broad market rally and that's healthy for these types of rallies. And that's the indication for me as a strategist to say, this is not just a house of cards that's gonna fall apart, that there is that there are legs to this rally, at least given the information that we have right now. So that's how I'm currently viewing the markets. And that's why for trades that I'm looking for in this particular market, I'm looking for still bullish opportunities. I'm not necessarily looking very strongly for bearish opportunities because again, when markets are this strong, bearish opportunities, generally speaking, last very, very short amount of time. You may find some very selective shorts that you can take, but usually those use, do not last more than two, three, four trading sessions, and they may start to turn around. So be very careful as you shoot for short positions here in this particular market. From my perspective, you're far better trying to find stocks that dipped to buy and hope that they continue to move higher. And specifically, one of the things that we have recently seen as the markets have rallied over the past uh, few weeks, as, as you can see when the OMX S, this is the S30, broke out above that range, and this is really just two weeks of price action, during that two weeks of price action, volatility has really started to come down. And what this provides us with is a new opportunity because prior to this, we were predominantly looking at option strategies to sell because volatility were high. We were selling credit spreads on stocks that we thought were going to rally every time that the market dipped. But now we're in an opportunity, now we're in a slightly different world, right? Now, from a valuation perspective, things certainly do not look cheap anymore, right? Back here, things you could justify perhaps that things were still relatively cheap. But now that the markets are back to January, December levels, it's hard to justify that these stocks are cheap to, to invest in them. So from my perspective, what this means is that you need to start shifting your option strategy along with that as well. Because... With options, one of the great things is that you can take on long exposure, but do so with, a, with limited risk. So buying calls, buying call spreads, when you think that markets are going to continue moving higher, be, and, and recognize the fact that when markets are trading at a higher valuation, there absolutely is a higher risk that maybe you get a correction, and that correction could be fairly deep because especially if geopolitical risks, all the different things that I listed before, if those were to materialize, you can get a correction that could be very fast, very violent, very deep. 
So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you can still maintain upside exposure so that if that doesn't happen and markets continue to move higher, you participate in that. But if the markets do correct lower due to some unforeseen event or some of the risks that I said, that you are protected in some way. And that's really where options come into play, right? Yes, you can go out and buy these stocks, but you're doing so with a significant amount of risk. So I just want to provide some context around how we want to look for opportunities here in this market and then talk about it in the context of the educational experience that we just talked about, which were how to select expiration dates. We, for those of you that joined us for that for that session you'll remember that we talked about if you're going to buy options you generally want to buy longer dated options because because longer dated options have a lower amount of time decay and then if you're selling options you generally want to sell shorter dated options because they have a faster amount of time decay so th those are really the things that we talked about in terms of, of uh, expiration dates and then strike prices whenever you're buying you generally want to buy something that's yeah, roughly in the money, because in the money options have, again, lower amounts of time decay. And then when you're selling, you generally want to sell out of the money options because those have higher amounts of time decay. And time decay is really one of the biggest factors in, in buying, when you're buying options that work against you. So we really want to optimize our strategies around that. So today, what I want to do is I want to show you a few opportunities we currently see in the market and specifically around how we want to optimize our option strategies to maximize our potential upside while doing it in a way that minimizes our downside risk. Because at this point, my biggest concern are some of the concerns that many of you have, meaning is, you know, are markets overbought? Should I still continue to buy and go long this market despite all the different concerns that I might see in the market? And the answer is yes, but you want to do it in a way that you have a control over how much risk that you have. And that's really where I want to turn to um, options play to show you a few different strategies that I've been looking at. Now, I was looking here at, at ASA uh, Abloy because this is a security company. Now, security certainly has been a, um, a, a, a trend, if you will, post COVID-19 in terms of how do you secure your facilities. Security from a general perspective is something that is a, a bit of a buzzword right now. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that this stock is going to do well. I found this stock more so from a technical scan here because this stock spent a lot of time basing here between uh, you know, 170, uh, 150 and 190, a bit of a triangle here, if you will. And what we just did is it resolved itself by breaking out above that triangle, came back to retest this as $95 support, uh, 195 support. And I think that there could be continuation higher here, especially with the rest of the market rallies. So this is more of a technical setup, but I wanted to show you how I would play this utilizing options and specifically show you how I would utilize the things that I just taught to show you which option strategies that I might take. So ASA's trading at around roughly 199 right now. What I want to do is I want to show you how I would go about selecting an expiration date and strike price. So first of all, I'm going to select I'm bullish here for ASA. ASA does report earnings here on July 17th, which happens to be the, July, the next expiration date. Now, we did say that whenever we're buying options, and again, we're buying options now because volatility is, is coming down. It's, it's a little cheaper to buy options right now. And buying options really allow you to take upside exposure with the smallest amount of risk. But still, there can be things that we can do in addition to optimize that. So first of all, I'm going to use, instead of buying 100 shares of, of ASA, I'm going to look at buying a call option. Now, like we said, we generally want to go a little further out in time when it comes to buying options because that reduces the time decay. So let's say I buy a uh, an August $200 call option, which is the at the money or 200 crown call option, which is the at the money call option. And as you can see, the midpoint here is 11, 11 and a half crowns. So uh, 1,150 crowns to buy one call option. Now you can also choose the 195 slightly in the money, which is costing 14.3 crowns, which is 1,400 crowns per contract here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, in addition to that, an additional strategy, a vertical spread that we can optimize to potentially increase our potential return, but more importantly, do so in a way with actually less risk. Because the goal here is to take on that upside exposure, but 
in the event, let's say we get another lockdown or perhaps um, you know, geopolitical risk get, get escalated, that we are able to protect ourselves to the downside that if we bought the stock, we wouldn't be able to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to buy the same August 195 call option because we know that going longer dated and slightly in the money is the best way to reduce our time, time decay on the long leg. But what we're going to do is we're going to also at the same time increase our our trade or I'm going to improve our trade by selling an out of the money call option. Now, for those of you that are a bit more advanced, what you can even do is sell a shorter dated call option and maximize yield even further. But today, we're, let's just keep it simple for now. Let's just talk about an August uh, 225 call option that we sell. So an out of the money call option. And we specifically chose the 225 strike because 225 represents a one standard deviation move for this particular stock by the August expiration. So for any expiration that you choose, this tool will give you the one standard deviation move. So for the July expiration, the one standard deviation move is 220. For August, that one standard deviation move is 225. So whenever you're selling options, especially something far out of the money like this, you generally want to use a standard deviation to help you choose your strike prices. So here, what I'm doing is I'm buying the 195 that cost me that 14 crowns, 14.3 crowns, and I'm selling the 225 call against it, which collects 2.75 crowns. So my net that I'm paying here is only 1,155 crowns versus 1,430 crowns. And what you're doing here is you're actually reducing your risk here by roughly 300 crowns when you're trading this vertical versus this call option. And I want to show you what, when you reduce 300 crowns, what that actually looks like in your portfolio. So uh, the assets trading at currently 200 crowns. So let's say, let's first talk about the downside. And I think it's always important that when you're looking at an option strategy, you first look at downside because that's really what matters. You know, the upside will always be there if you first control your downside. But if you don't control your downside, guess what? You are at risk of blowing up your account. And when you blow up your account, guess what? There's no more upside because you don't have any more capital to trade. So always look at your, uh, your downside first. So let's just, let's Let's just say that, that this stock declines back to this low, which is around 168 crowns here or so, the low here of this range, right? So let's just call it 165. So let's just say what happens if the stock declines to 165 on some unexpected news and it declines. Maybe bad earnings comes out, whatever that is, right? If you had bought 100 shares of the stock, you would be looking at roughly a 3,500 crown loss on this position. If you bought the, the, the call option, notice how you would have reduced your, your risk by more than half. Here, you're only risking 1,400 crowns versus 3,500 crowns. So you're risking almost a third of the risk here um, by buying a call option instead of buying the stock. So right off the bat, just the call option will give you substantially better risk management tools than buying the stock. And then if you bought the call spread here, notice how you're only risking 1,100 crowns. So exact, about one third of the risk that you're taking here by buying the stock. Now, so right off the bat, we know that we can risk substantially less here by buying this vertical spread than buying the call option. Now, I just want to make sure everyone understands this and follows me so far. So please type one into the chat window if this makes sense to you so far, as far as understanding the difference in terms of risk between buying, a call, buying the stock, buying a call, and buying a call spread. Okay, perfect. I see a lot of ones. So now that we know our risk, now let's take a look at the potential upside. So let's say ASA actually starts to move up and maybe reaches that 220, 225 level, which if you go back to this uh, chart here, 220, 215, 220 is roughly this type of support level right here. So let's say it, it makes it up to back to 220, which is a good target price here in my opinion. Here, as you can see, uh, this would cost me 20,000 crowns. I would make 2,000 crowns off of it, which is a 10% return. That's really not a bad return on the underlying stock. But notice here, if I bought this call option, I'm risking 1,400. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting up 1,400 crowns to make 1,070 crowns. That's about a 74% return on my risk or on my, on my trade. Versus if I bought the trade here for 
1,100 crowns, I'm making 1,300 crowns, which is 116% return on my capital. So notice how here on the strategy on the right-hand side, not only did I risk the least amount of capital if the trade went against me, I also made the highest return when the trade went in my favor. And that's really why this strategy is one of the best strategies to take in this specific type of market environment that where you want the upside, but you know that there's a significant higher or elevated risk of a potential pullback. So when markets reach overbought conditions, when markets reach peak valuations, when, when things seem overbought, those are times where you have a higher probability of a pullback. There's no question about that. So how do you continue to position for upside in an environment where you feel that there's a higher probability of a pullback is to use strategies like this and optimize your risk or reward so that if you are right, you are getting paid more than what you're risking here. So if the stock reaches 225 by the August expiration, your maximum gain here is 1800 crowns off of an 1100 crown investment. So your pay, your maximum payment here on this particular trade is almost double what you're risking here. So those are the types of risk rewards that you need to utilize in this type of market to make taking on this type of risk suitable, okay? Now, I just wanna go back real quick to make sure also everyone understands how I selected these strike prices, why I chose the August 195. If that makes sense to you in terms of buying because when we buy, we wanna to buy a longer dated option. We always wanna buy a slightly in the money option. Please type two into the chat window. And then if you also at the same time understand why we chose to sell that 225, why we sold something so far out of the money for 2.75 crowns, just please type three into the chat window. I just want to make sure everyone also understands not just the strategy itself, but how we constructed this. Because the tool itself is really designed from the ground up to help you construct and help you provide some guidance to give you started. And then you can really play around using the PL simulator to see how these strategies perform. And you can always modify them and change the different strikes and expiration dates. And again, for those of you that are really um, experience, you might want to sell maybe even a shorter dated option because in the August 225, right? Um, let me just let me just put the two side by side for you here. Um, long call vertical 195 225. So this was the first example that we talked about here, right? Where we bought the 195, sold the 225 for 2.75 crowns. That's collecting 2.75 crowns in 72 days. That's the amount of income that we can receive if this stock stays below 225 by August. Now, for those of you that are a little bit more advanced, what you'll notice is that you can also sell a July 220 call, right? So this is half the amount of time. So 37 versus 72 days, that's roughly half the amount of time. Notice here, I can collect two crowns in half the amount of time. So would you rather collect 2.7, 275 crowns in, 70, in 72 days, or would you rather collect 200 crowns in 37 days? Which one, whoops, which one would you choose? Type into the chat window, which one would you choose? Number one or number two? Uh, two, 275 crowns in 72 days or 200 crowns in 36 days? The answer is two, like many of you answered. Exactly, right? So for those of you that are a little bit more experienced and you want to take on and, you, and you're comfortable managing positions that expire on different days, you can maximize, even further maximize what I'm teaching you here by selling a shorter dated option that has the same probability of hitting. So here you can collect two, 200 crowns roughly in 36 days. And then when the July options expiration expire, you could potentially sell another call that expires here in August. And maybe at that point collect another $2. So your total at the end of this whole trade maybe is you collected 400 crowns instead of just 275. And what that means is that instead of just paying 1100 crowns roughly for this trade, you might at this point at the end only trade may pay maybe only 900 crowns or so. So that's just a, an example of how you can take what I'm teaching you here to an extreme, okay? And actually really extract as much yield as possible by selling really short of dated options more frequently because that's really what we learned predominantly in our class uh, last week, okay? So this is just an example of how you can apply what we're teaching you here to the real markets. So with that, let's take a look at another example. Um, 
I'm going to look at, does it, I'm going to let you guys choose. I'm going to look at either AstraZeneca or Bill. Anyone has a choice between AstraZeneca or Bill? And I'll be honest, I can't, I can't pronounce that name. So I'm just going to call it Bill. Okay, so Nicholas says AstraZeneca. Let's take a look at AstraZeneca. Now, I thought AstraZeneca, okay, multiple people asked for AstraZeneca. So let's take a look at AstraZeneca. Um, I, you know, I found, the, I found the healthcare industry to be quite interesting from the perspective of the pharma space was the strongest sector during the initial rally. And then over the past month, as markets kind of took a, a bit of a pause, Healthcare kind of went sideways, pharma went sideways, and when markets took off, pharma kind of continued to decline. So the relative strength of the pharma industry and the, and the pharmaceuticals and the healthcare industry has actually taken a decline. Um, and, I, and, you know, to some degree, I actually find that this is a better opportunity if you're looking for bullish opportunities. Instead of chasing stocks that are at all-time highs, is you want to wait for stocks to dip and look for that, uh, that upside opportunity. And AstraZeneca has, is currently trading at a major $1,000 support level, which as you can see was resistance for a long time pre-COVID. And then after COVID broke out above it, and I think tested it multiple times as support. So this from a risk to reward perspective, is extremely attractive because I have a very strong, uh, you know, I have a quite a bit of upside and it doesn't have to move very much lower before I can say I'm wrong on this trade. I'm going to get out at a small loss. So the risk reward on AstraZeneca and from my perspective looks very attractive. So I'm going to select I'm bullish. I'm going to look at my three bullish strategies and same thing here. It defaults to July, but I think that because that there, are, there aren't a lot of options here before and, and August sometimes is a little too far out. I'm gonna manually select the August expiration. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna look at the August 990 call because the AstraZeneca is trading at 995 and the 990 is the one that's slightly in the money. This costs 5,800 crowns to buy 100 shares versus almost 100,000 crowns to buy 100 shares of the stock. So only cost me about five, about 6% of the underlying stock price to buy a call option that goes all the way out to August. Versus if I bought a call vertical, yes, I would buy the 990 call again for that same 58 crowns, but I would sell something around 1125 because that's a one standard deviation move. Now, I just want to make sure everyone understands why I'm selling this one standard deviation move. So please type um, four into the chat window if this makes sense to you. But we're selling the one standard deviation move because that's the price at which AstraZeneca only has about a 15% chance that the stock is going to be above that price by expiration. Whenever we sell an option like this, we want that option to expire worthless so that we keep the eight crowns, right? We're, we're selling this option because we want to reduce the cost of buying this 58 crown option. So how do we reduce the cost is we sell some options. So here in this particular case, yes, I can sell a lower strike price for more premium, but what it does is it limits the upside that I have on the strategy. So what I want to do is I want to find the balance between where do I get enough premium to offset the cost of my long call, but at the same time, I'm not selecting a strike price that, that will limit the upside that I want in this particular name. And that's why we always use a probability-based approach to select that strike price. And that's how we arrive at 1125, because that's the one standard deviation move. And you can even use the trading range simulator, which shows you the one standard deviation move for any expiration. So here for August, the one standard deviation move, as you can see, is a 1,125. So that's telling me that there's only about a 15% chance that AstraZeneca will be above 1,125 by expiration. So 15% chance, that's the type of, of, of um, strikes that I want to see. That's why we selected 1125. So hopefully that hope, helps you understand, especially Wolfgang the, uh, you know, or whoever answered no as to how we selected that strike price. So here I'm paying 5,800 crowns. Here I'm only paying 5,000 crowns because I've collected eight crowns by selling that 1125. So again, let's go back to the charts here. Let's say AstraZeneca 
breaks this support level, right? So let's say I'm wrong and AstraZeneca, instead of bouncing off the support, actually breaks that support and starts to move lower. So from my perspective, if it breaks this support, I think it can move down here pretty quickly, right? You have this bit of a head, I would call it a head and shoulders pattern that you have here, right? Uh, maybe a better way to show it is um, using something like this. I think this is a bit of a head and shoulder, an inverted head and shoulders pattern here. And I would think that you would probably hit this shoulders pattern pretty quickly if it did break below that support level, which is roughly around 840 or so. So to the downside, if AstraZeneca declines to 840, if I bought 100 shares of that stock, I'm looking at about 15,000 crowns of loss on my roughly 100,000 crowns. So 15% loss on my stock position. That's a big amount to take, a big amount of risk to take in this type of market environment. Versus if I bought a call option, as you can see, I'm only risking 5,800 crowns, which is about a third, a little more than a third, or this call spread where I'm risking exactly 500 crowns, so which is exactly one third of what I'm risking if I bought the stock. So first of all, my primary goal when markets are overbought, when markets are rallying, is to limit losses. And as you can see clearly, the best way or one of the ways to limit your losses is by moving down the chain here. And that's part of why we created this, this tool in this particular fashion so that you can learn to progress as a trader. If you're an equities trader right now, you're familiar with this strategy. And as you learn basic option strategies, you're gonna learn buying a call option. And as you get a bit more, bit more familiar with options trading, a bit more complex and a bit more experienced, you start to trade these verticals and you start to see the benefit of these types of strategies. Number one, in terms of how much capital you need to trade them, how much risk that you're taking, but also on the, on the best side, I would say, is the fact that if a trade does go in your favor, let's say AstraZeneca rallies up to 1080, which is the uh, re relative all-time high here. Here, if you had bought the stock, you're looking at about an 8.4% return. Not a bad return, right? But as we said, that we're risking 15% to the downside if this trade goes south. I certainly don't want to make 8% return while risking 15. On the, on the call option here, I'm looking at a 3,200 $3, crown profit on my 5,800 crown investment, which is a 55% return. That's not bad but still not particularly spectacular in my opinion if that happens. Versus this call spread here, I'm looking at a 4,000 a crown return on my 5,000 crown investment, which is an 80% return, which certainly looks far more attractive. Not the best returns, right? So AstraZeneca really needs to make a move beyond that all-time high of around 1084 in order for this to look really attractive. But certainly if I'm trying to play for a short-term bounce here in AstraZeneca, I would much prefer to utilize a strategy like this and limit my losses than to take this strategy or this strategy that can expose me to a little bit more um, in terms of risk. So I, I hope that everyone understands that in terms of why we're using these, these types of strategies specifically for this type of market condition. So please type five into the chat window if that makes sense to you. And I will just make one small last modification just to show you, you know, if you were to make this even a little better, what you can do is you can use that call diagonal that I was talking about where we buy the August 990 call. It still costs us 5,800 crowns, but what we sell is a shorter dated option. We can sell a July 1080 call, which is the July one standard deviation move. And as you can see, this collects 750 crowns. So again, in 37 days, whoops, 37 days, here I'm collecting 750 crowns in terms of income versus here I was collecting, uh, how much was it? Was it 800? Yeah, I think it was 800 crowns, right? In 72 days. So which one would you rather have? 750 crowns in 37 days or 800 crowns in 72 days? I think the answer to everyone is going to be a resounding, you would rather have 750 crowns in 37 days than 800 crowns in 72 days. And just to show you that real quick, um, yeah, so the selling the August 1125 gives me eight crowns, selling the July 1080 gives me 750 crowns. So almost the same amount of income in half the amount of time. So 
that would be, you know, if you were a, a little bit more experienced, that would be the strategy that I would take because I can collect 750 crowns by July. And if that still holds true and then the stock is still below 1080 by July, I can sell another call option, maybe collect another 750, 700 crowns. So total, what I'm going to bring in all in is roughly almost 1400 crowns in terms of income offsetting the 5,800 crowns that I'm paying versus in the vertical strategy, I'm only able to reduce my trade down to 5,000 crowns here by reducing it. Uh, my whole trade will only cost me about 4,400 crowns um, if I'm able to collect $1,400 in income versus $800 in income. So that would be even further reduction in risk and what that also does, it actually amplifies my return even further if the stock does rally substantially over the next uh, couple of months here. So that's just giving you, uh, hopefully, um, I would say some, some inspiration for those of you that are, are not quite there yet in terms of understanding everything that I just explained, that if you're still in the learning process, it's okay. But I wanted to illustrate to everyone just the flexibility that you have with options, specifically for this type of market condition, that, that you don't have to feel uncomfortable. And I know many people do feel very uncomfortable with continuing to try to take long positions when they know the economics and they know the fundamentals out there doesn't align with where the markets are trading. And that is sometimes very difficult to do is to detach yourself from the mark that the market sometimes is different from the economy or from corporate fundamentals sometimes that how do you still continue to purchase stocks? How do you continue to purchase long positions in a, in a market that you know uh, may be heading for a correction, maybe in Q3, Q4, right? And, and the answer is using strategies like this that protect yourself in the event that a market goes against you, that you're really uh, limiting your losses to the downside. So that covers what I wanted to share with you guys here today. I hope that you guys find this useful in helping you better understand how to position yourself here for the in, for the markets that we currently are in. I know it is a difficult market sometimes to trade, but hopefully this provides you with some insights into number one, how we're viewing the markets, and number two, how we're positioning for this type of market utilizing options to reduce our risk. So just a quick reminder for those of you that have access to options play, or if, I'm sorry, for those of you that do not have access to options play, you can sign up for it for free by going to optionsplay.se. So everything I just showed you, the education webinars, the platform, the recorded videos, the weekly reports that we send out on Mondays um, for helping you better understand and navigate the market. That's all free of charge to you at optionsplay.se. And what we are doing here to hopefully continuing to help you improve the services that we provide to provide education, provide tools, is we do have a quick survey that we would like many of you to fill out um, after you finish here today. And I'm gonna post this into the chat window, the link here. Um, we're just asking you to fill out a survey to give us an, some, some feedback as to how you think we're doing in terms of providing you with tools and education and services, and also just how happy you are with options trading in general from what you're getting from your brokerage firm. That's gonna help us continuing to improve our services and provide with what you guys need for your options trading. So with that, I wanna thank everyone for taking the time out here this evening to listen to uh, our, our market update, understanding how we're utilizing the, the platform to trade for current market opportunities. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up for Q&A. Um, I know there were a couple of questions already submitted while I was talking, so I'm going to go back to those and answer some of those questions. So I'm going to first off by talking um, about a question that Wolfgang asked, which is, what's the meaning of open interest? How should I use it? When is it useful? And how does options play use open interest? So Wolfgang, you have a question that I think many people have regarding volume and open interest. The answer as far as the meaning of open interest, it simply means how many contracts are simply out there. So if let's say you buy to open a, let's just go back to our concrete example here. Let's say you, you buy to open this August 990 call. And at the same time, someone else sells to open that same August 990 call. And each one of you trade one contract at a time then you'll see the open interest reflect two contracts because you're long, the other person's short one contract, the total open interest is two. That's all that tells you. That just tells you what someone else or what, um, 
what open contracts are out there. Does it tell you anything about direction? Does it tell you anything about, um, you know, anything else? The answer is no. It just tells you who has traded or someone has traded and, and how many contracts. So, however, I think what most people utilize open interest for is liquidity. People feel that if something has a high amount of open interest, that there's more liquidity. If something has low open interest, there's low liquidity. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Open interest has nothing to do with other than whether or not someone else happened to trade that specific strike. And guess what? People tend to trade round numbers, right? So when you have uh, strike prices, you know, 1050, 1100, people tend to trade round numbers. Um, so is, is, the, is the 1050 strike more liquid than the um, 1150? The answer is absolutely not. So just because something has low open interest does not mean that it's not, it's not it's any less liquid, even though I tend to find a lot of options, a lot of traders use open interest as a liquidity gauge. Um, so please, please, please don't use open interest as a liquidity gauge. What's a far better gauge is the bid ask spread, the size between the bid price and the ask price. And we have a strategy checklist that actually checks for the liquidity. We check the bid ask price. So use our spread and liquidity calculator to give you a sense for how liquid an option is. Don't use open interest. So I hope that answered your question, Wolfgang. Um, let's see, there was one question that when I was talking about, Krister asked, how would you create a trade if you were bearish? So let's take a look at what if we're bearish on AstraZeneca. So at the bottom of any strategy that you utilize on options play, you can either select I'm bullish and you'll see three bullish strategies, or you can select I'm bearish and see three bearish strategies. So you would construct it the same way. Now, same thing, maybe in this particular case, I will say that again, bearish opportunities in this type of market, generally speaking, they don't last very long. So you may not want to buy an option all the way out to August. You might just want to stick with the July expiration here because you might get a quick move to the downside here. So first let's look at the risk, right? Let's say you buy a put option versus a put spread and AstraZeneca rallies back up to 1080. Here, as you can see, if you shorted the stock, you would lose 8,400 crowns versus 4,600 crowns on the put versus 3,700 crowns on the put spread. And, but if, if this trade does go in our, in our favor, which we said is roughly about the 850 level, which is the neckline of that uh, head and shoulders pattern. Here, as you can see, shorting the stock would give you a 14% return. A put option here actually gives you the best return, 235% return. I guess 850 is a pretty big move to the downside by July, but this is really where the vertical spread, because I've sold that 900 put to collect 850 crowns, I've limited my gains below 900. So if the, so if the stock makes any moves below 900, the vertical spread actually does not participate in it. And that's the tricky part about picking a strike price on your vertical spread is because if you pick a strike price that's too high, you're not going to, you're going to limit your losses. But if you pick a strike that's too low, you're not really getting enough premium. So we're trying to find that balance here. And, and the balance here in this particular case, 850 is a pretty extreme move to the downside. As you can see, that's actually well below the one standard deviation move. So, you know, if you do get a move, I, I forget what number we said. I think it was maybe 880 that we said that we said was moves to the downside. As you can see, even if it exceeds that 900 uh, level by a little bit, you're still actually going to outperform here. So that's how you can use options play to quickly look for bearish opportunities as well. So I hope that answered your question, Krister. Um, HV is asking, I'm using IB. Is it possible to connect your tool to an IB account? Currently, this is not connected to any accounts at the moment, but what we do have here for trading is the fact that you can click on the trade button and we have the short code for you to copy into your brokerage firm so that you can quickly have the details on how to enter this trade into your broker's platform. Um, Mika is asking, is, Nord is Nordnet platform good in your opinion, other platforms which you would recommend? So Mika, I will say that from my perspective, I am broker agnostic, so I don't, um, necessarily advocate or for any specific brokerage firm, I prefer to remain neutral. My role is to educate. My role is to provide everyone with an understanding as to how to look at the markets, how to trade the markets. And I leave the selection as far as what brokerage firm you use or what platform you use to you. Um, I do work with the different brokerage firms to provide education. 
I will say Nordnet is certainly one of the brokerage platforms that seems the most open in providing their customers with as much content with respect to education as possible. And I certainly encourage that and I like that. So I, I, that is the firm that I've worked with the most, but it doesn't, I can't really speak to all of the Swedish brokers simply because I haven't worked with all of them and I certainly haven't used all their platforms. So I don't want to point you in a direction where I certainly don't have a lot of experience in. But like I said, my role here is to educate and provide um, analysis to give you a better understanding of how to trade and then it's up to you to select your own brokerage platform. Uh, if I find some trades to simulate, can I collect them in a repository and options play to follow up before going live? That is a great question. So the question is, if you have a trade that you want to take a look at, let's just say, let's just say you want to look at that AstraZeneca trade that I was uh, pulling out before, the 9.90.11.25. And the question was, if I wanted to follow this trade before I traded live, is there a way to do that? And the answer is yes. You can click on the blue button for any strategy that you want to trade, whether it's a stock, the call, the call spread. If you click on the blue share button, and there's a link here that says copy to clipboard, what this does is when you click on the copy the clipboard section, it saves the trade for you in your profile. And you can actually go into your profile, uh, go into your, your profile, um, hmm. I apologize for this. But um, I'm gonna look into this, but you can go into your profile and actually pull up all of your saved trades. And then what it not only does is it saves the trade for you, it'll actually track the P&L for you. So if you come back tomorrow and AstraZeneca is up 10 crowns, it'll show you how much the P&L of that trade has actually increased from yesterday to today. Um, I seem to have a little technical issue at the moment, but yes, the tool does do that for you and you can do that using options. My apologies, I think my internet cut out there here for a second. Uh, but th th the question that I was trying to answer at the time was, you know, do you, can you uh, save a trade and look at it later? And the answer is yes. And I was trying to show everyone when I got cut off there, which is regardless of what trade you're looking at, you can click on the blue share button, you can click on the clipboard, which will allow you to save a trade. And once you click on that save trade, you can go into your profile uh, to find that trade. So once you click on that link to clip, uh, copy the clipboard, you can go into your profile. And within your profile, there's a section called Save Trades. So as you can see, the trade that I just saved a few minutes ago, the AstraZeneca long call, if you click on it, not only does it bring up the trade, it will also track the P&L of that trade for you as well. So this is really designed to help for those of you that are new to options trading and you're trying to learn to gain your experience by practicing. As you can see, trade P&L zero because I just opened this trade two seconds ago. But if you come back tomorrow and AstraZeneca has moved, you'll be able to see not only the trade, but also how it's performed over this time. So that's how you can utilize options play to save a trade and then look at it uh, at, a, at a later time. So with that, um, I wanna thank everyone for taking the time out here this evening. I hope that you guys find this useful in helping you better understand how to trade uh, options. And again, for those of you that want to help contribute to making this experience as best as possible for everyone, please fill out the survey that I just posted to everyone here in the chat window. It will really help us better understand how to provide better services for you and understand what you feel that you're lacking to, to, to do your options trading. And we'll try to help fill in some of those gaps and anything that you do feel you might be lacking for your options trading. So thank you so much. I hope that you guys find this uh, useful. This is recorded, so we'll send out both the recording and the slides to everyone as soon as we can. I'll also include a link to that survey so that if you wanna fill that out later, you can. But please, um, I, I encourage everyone to utilize these types of tools to explore and learn because this is really designed to help you limit your risk. These types of markets are tricky to trade. It's, you know, things can turn on a dime. Things can turn very quickly as we saw back in February. You want to utilize these types of strategies to protect yourself. And this is one of the best ways to do it. So uh, thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great evening and I will see you guys here next week. Have a great night.